Hi everybody. I was just thinking how many of us have some scrapbook papers that we've just popped away. You know, some of them are double-sided. They've got all kinds of uh, interesting two-for-ones. I've just cut some leaves out of a nice green colour. And look at this one. It's the same print, but it, one's red on white and one's white on red. So I'm just going to cut out some sort of, I don't know, petal-y kind of shapes. I'm just, uh, just having a go. I'm not going to a pattern. It's just a basic, basic shape. And we'll see what happens. This is one of those occasions when I really don't know what I'm doing at all. But I, can, I figure that I can do something. Look at those. They go quite nicely like that, don't they? the red up against the white so we'll see what happens here but uh, yeah underneath that is uh, a packet of this crinkly uh, sheets of oh, almost like a tissue paper much much uh, thicker and it's sort of crinkly anyway I thought I'll grab the scissors out and I'll do just a sort of a, a round scallop edge kind of big flower see what happens with that so I'm just doing that very basically there ah, pop that down you know I could put I could put the uh, the red and the white on there leave some of the red bits showing maybe that would be one way to do it but I'll trim and change things as I go to sort of figure out what I want to do really I just want to get started so I've started and it's through shifting things around that you figure out what you might like is that going to work best looks kind of good like that that's a good start you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you try something else. Then you might think, oh no, I've gone too far. But you can pull it back. You can do something else with it. So I'm just having a go at this for a start. I'd like some of the red to show. And using, you know, a little bit of the, the white on red and the red on white pattern. Which is the reverse of that paper. I think that would be a good start. Hmm. So what about the leaves that I cut out? Where could I put them? Hmm. Anyway, what else can I add? Well, I'm going to add some of this lovely old paper of uh, music sheet. But I've decided that this... This red flower is a little bit too big. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a trim job here. And I'll just cut that little serrated edge. Or not serrated, but you know, curved edge in a little bit. All the way around and uh, end up with a smaller flower. And I'm going to keep those little bits. I might use them yet. But here's our, our beautiful musical paper with our red. I've just grabbed uh, some glue, Mod Podge in this case. And because I might want thicker or thinner glue, depending, I've actually gotten a little saucer here. I put a bit of water on the bottom of it and I've added a blob of glue. And I can dilute or use full strength as much as I want as much as I need by continually using that water and thinning it down from the edges if that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to use some little bit of the thicker stuff, the thicker glue, not so much water and get some of these pieces down and look at how I've decided to use those little bits that we cut off the edge. Now I quite like that music sheet, that's giving it something interesting in the background. 
Uh, now it's time to sort of grab some petals and think, well, what are we going to do here? Yeah, but I am keen to get something down. So I pop this one down and a little bit more up here and just keep adding those, those petals. Using some facing up one way, some facing down, just to get that variation in there. Well, I don't know yet what we're doing. I, I, I'm not frightened though. I think that we can do something. You know, it's fun to play. Let's get in touch with your, your child and a child and and play still don't know what to do with that leaf let's bung it on somewhere there we go so whilst we're still designing what we're going to put on this I'm going to rip some of that some of that musical sheet make it an interesting kind of edge maybe some off the top too I'm going to put some glue on a nice white piece of um, background card it's not very heavy and glue it down And then I think, I really don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm grabbing some light pink tissue paper. And I'm just looking to see what it does if I try and go over bits of it. Does it, can we still see the pattern underneath? Are we still getting those variations of color? Is it making it a little bit more subtle? You know, and you go through stages where you think, oh, I don't know, step too far. But you always think of something more you can do. With this layering up of tissue paper, the, the glue that we're using can be quite watered down. So I can uh, mix it with a lot of that water that I have there on that saucer. We're even taking it out and over top of some of that uh, that musical paper, music sheets. Well, that's interesting. Now what? Well, I found a a piece of um, scrapbooking booking paper, and it had already been cut into a flower kind of shape so I popped it in the center. You can layer up quite a bit of tissue paper before it obscures the background. Look at how it produces this interesting sort of watercolor kind of effect. It's pretty. Now you may have preferred it without the tissue paper with the nice bright colors. I'm not sure where I'm going at all yet. But it's all teaching me something. You know, I think there's something to be gained with just experimenting. So I've decided to grab out some watercolors. I'm just going to use this red, this nice crimsony red, quite watered down. And I'm just going to use it to maybe tint some of that background paper. Maybe I'll just sort of add in a few bits that might suggest more of a flower. A bit of shading. Not a lot really. It's still pretty obscure what the uh, what it is, but you know it's, we're heading somewhere. A little bit of darkness in the center too, just to tint tint that tissue paper. 
That might make it pop a bit. Let's have a closer look now. See, you can still see that printed paper underneath, can't you? But I decided to add a little bit more. I'm going to, I'll need the thicker glue again here. I have a bit of trouble gluing this one. All papers are different. And I'm just popping it down. Yeah, on the outside. kind of flower is it? I'm really not sure. Really it was just because I found extra bits of those scraps and I uh, hadn't realised it had fallen to the floor and I thought oh, okay well, let's get them on. Do I want any more? Well I, I don't think I do want a large piece of, of that on but maybe we could tear little bits off and have little little bits of it on. It'll all come together as a whole picture eventually. But the fun is just getting something down and seeing how it develops. A bit more glue and then some of these ripped pieces on and we'll see how that works for us. But I feel like I want something more. So I look at this. Look at this really old crinkly bit of um, beautiful paper. I've used it many times but it's all creased and torn in places and losing some of the print. Right now I'm just going to cut out this very roughly this blue one separate it out from the others and I'm going to cut it out a little bit neater now I'm not even going to attempt to do the antennas I'm just going to do the head and later on you can draw or stitch in those antennas antennae so I go down here and then really this this tattered edge to his wings this lovely blue butterfly the easiest way to cut it is see how i am turning it backwards and forwards with my left hand whilst i'm cutting with the right my scissors never change direction much but the the actual butterfly yes i'm turning it all the time so much easier to do it that way nearly finished it's got a lovely tattered black edge and that should look really nice up against it it's a bit of contrast and the blue of course very nice and try it a few different places to see where you might like it once again and then when you do decide it's time for some more glue so pop a little bit down on the back of the butterfly. Position it where you want. And there it goes. Now I'll probably try and do something with these watercolors again. I've got a nice blue here, well watered down. I'm just going to do a little wash over top. And what it will do is the paint will settle in to those bits that are creased and torn and where the print had come off. So that helps. And uh, whilst I'm at it, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to add a little bit of a wash on the outside of the flower around the butterfly. Just to add a bit of, I don't know, a bit of contrast to all of that pink. So a little bit of blue. Looks quite good and blue and pink make purple anyway so you might get some purpley tones as well. So that's quite interesting. So sometimes you might want to add a different colour or something darker for contrast or something lighter. 
So I'm just going to pop in some of that uh, ripped bits that were left from that music sheet. And I'll glue it down too. But I'm looking at it again and I'm just thinking that red that I have is very stark still. Maybe I can think of something else. It's still a little damp, so maybe I should let it dry a bit. But let's get some ideas happening. Now, I recently bought some of these nice pens, but I try it and I can see it's not really showing up. It's not doing enough. No, that's not going to work. So what will I try? Well, off to the side, as you can see, I'm testing different pens that I might have that I think might work. Uh, I don't want to put it on the actual picture, but it's not going to matter over there. So, what can I do? Well, as I can't find a pen that I really like, I'm going to try some crayons. I'm just wanting to have it so that that red is not just, you know, a complete contrast to the rest of the pink. So I'm just adding in some little bits of of a red crimsony colour just to help it blend in a little bit better, following the same kind of contours, not being terribly, terribly artistic about it. Uh, I just like the idea that that will help to, you know, to blend it. That'll do. Now, whilst I'm here, I think maybe I should add in um, the antenna on that butterfly. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie marker just to put in those two little lines make a little curve and maybe a little ball on the end. You know, I think I'll add a little bit of stitching. I'm going to get some orange, thread it onto a needle, and then maybe just do some long stitches in the center, going out from the center. I have a knot at the end and I'll just pull it up from underneath and that knot will stay on the back and I'm just going to do it like it's uh, spokes on a wheel just so that we're giving that center just something more I'm jumping the gun a bit here because I haven't really let it dry properly. And, uh, well, the obvious happens. A piece falls off. I can glue it back again later. So at last, I think it's coming together a bit. When I finish using that thread, I'm just going to uh, put the needle through to the back with the thread, go underneath a few stitches. I'll end up uh, trimming it then and putting a little bit of tape over it so that it won't come undone. There. Now I'm going to do a little stitch, a little bit of stitching with this white stranded cotton. I'll use two threads. And the same as before, I'll do a little bit of stitching. This time I think I'll go around, maybe bring out a little bit more petal shapes. You know, go towards the center, come out around near the edge and, and back in towards the center in places. Just to sort of uh, pull that petal shape back in. And when I'm finished, just like last time, through to the back, through a few stitches underneath and tape it and trim it and get done. 
Now you there's loads of things you could add. You could add stampings and all, all kinds of different things. But I'm just looking now, I'm getting out a map board frame. See how each time I change it to a different spot, it makes a different picture. So, still plenty of opportunity to change it and do things to it. But I just thought you'd like to see something quick and something of the process. So yeah, here's a few close-ups for you. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this little quick show. And uh, if you have, don't forget to press like and subscribe.